Well, hello there. Listen to me. I need you to get in a position, prayerfully, that you can be somewhere where you can play some worship music like I'm playing before you continue this message. Um, I just bless God that he's given me holy boldness because I'm not scared of the devil. But I do believe that we can open gateways uh, of hell if we're not prepared. So I got prayed up before I got on here, and then I'm playing Daffy P. Key's uh, Hope and Healing uh, instrumental so that I can make sure that the words that I am speaking over this call that those things will continue to be dispelled, and I believe that Holy Spirit is resting and ruling in here. But this is what I'm saying to you. We're in an hour right now. As you can see, the topic that I'm talking about here with this uh, demonic clown uh, called Pennywise. Okay, and I feel this is a good time for me to release this information to you and that you do your own research because I'm only going to give you an overview, and I want you to look at one site that um, I really was, moved by and, you know, and really, really praying about, and that one is called uh, tvovermind.com. Now, what you need to know, if you are a parent or grandparent that's listening to me, this clown, and I can see why I never really liked clowns, okay? You know, and they look like they, look like they would be kind of humorous and stuff like that, but it was something about the clown that I never really liked. And I don't understand that, but I believe maybe it's the Holy Spirit that's always been, you know, big in me, but it was something about the clown. But anyway, this thing that uh, called Pennywise, okay, isn't that a name that you can think about that they had to find an intriguing way? Uh, that, that Stephen King guy, I tell you, he, he really, really must have been really deep down into all type of cult and demonic stuff. But Pennywise, our kids, parents are giving these kids these, uh, machines and these, what's it called, these, uh, what do you call them, these, um, these phones and stuff like that for them to have these toys to keep them quiet or whatever. But these kids, I was, I was talking to one of my clients and said that her little brother knows how to speak in the phone so that he can get to look at these different movies on YouTube, you know, they can talk and tell, you know, just like you would tell, look up an address or whatever for whatever you're seeking on your phone, you can speak it into the phone and it'll find what you like. These kids are looking for the scary, the gore, the, uh, you know, the things they shouldn't even be looking at. But the reason why I believe the Lord wants me to talk to you as a parent, as a grandparent, we need to pay attention to what these children are doing. We cannot, we can no longer just give them the phone to just play with, to be quiet. Uh, we got to make sure that we are monitoring and watching what they're doing. I mean, her, this particular client's brother is only four, going on five, and he's been watching this stuff, trying to tune into this stuff. And thank God his mother's the one told me about it, that, you know, she was able to tune into the fact that he was getting intrigued and watching this stuff and wants to watch this kind of stuff. Now, you think about it. Now, he's only four, and he's able to summon, you know, the phone to put him in tune with this Pennywise. My God. P-E-N-N-Y-W-I-S-E. I I bind you, Pennywise, and any other demonic spirit that may be attached to you by the power of the blood and the cross of Calvary. And I decree that the Holy Spirit even now is raging war. Yes, God, with the warring angel Michael against every principality and power and every demonic force that comes from hell through you, through your disguise, through your character. By the power of the blood, I cast you down from our children from this earth. Yeah, from all those minds who are watching this kind of stuff. I thank you, God, that I'm sealing that by the promise of your blood in Jesus' name. But anyway, uh, Pennywise is a character from a Stephen King uh, movie. It was a 1986 movie, a horror novel that they call It. And these kids even know that. You know, but this character was also known as It in that movie or as Pennywise, the dancing clown. See, that's the deal. Uh, they they want to look like this clown is so fascinating dancing and doing all this jumping around, you know, and things like that, magical. But in this form of a clown, this was one of the iconic characters in these horror films that Stephen King created. This character takes on a lot of forms. If you think about it, they have these games out now where they can look in this like a, a 3D type of 
movie screen, and when they look in it, everything in his mama begin to change. Uh, it draws them to be fascinated by this type of movement that's going on in there. And what happens, these kids, uh, it enters their soul. And many parents don't realize that these characters, what the Pennywise clown does uh, in this movie, it was supposed to take on all these different forms. I mean, it, it may be a snake, and depending on, I guess, the strength of, uh, I guess, of what it's done to you, uh, the way you're, the child or the individual is receiving it, uh, your weakness or your strength, it'll turn into something else, okay? And so a lot of the people who don't recognize this thing are really losing their minds. And a lot of the kids, you know, or they really, really believe this thing is real. So I'm going to tell you a couple of things. You can go back and look at this on your own. The first thing they said that it's, it is really not a clown, okay, that he isn't really a clown. That's number one. They said if most people were asked to describe Pennywise, they said that they would describe as an evil clown, that he's often known as Pennywise, the, the, the dancing clown. They say, but this character is really not a clown at all. He's actually an evil, shape-shifting entity, which means that they say he pretends to be one thing, and then he turns into something else after he's captured, I guess, the person's mind to really focus on, you know, the fact that they are a clown or that they are having all these magical things that they're doing. Then number two, they said that Pennywise come from the delights. I thought this was really, really something because it was a blood type of movement that this thing was doing. It originated, they said it originally originated from this alternative like universe called dead lights, okay? They said that these dead light would look you look upon them or anybody that would see these dead lights that they would instantly go insane. This is one of the strategies that the enemy is using for these children so as they gaze upon these things, it will consume their mind. The ultimate goal is to destroy the child's mind. Now they said that that they thought a lot of different people who actually believe that this particular uh, clown that they call Pennywise was created by somebody named or inspired by somebody named John Gacy. But this was a person who was supposed to be some type of, no, some type of notorious serial killer. Uh, they said he worked as an entertainer and he dressed up as a clown for you know, all these different community events and stuff like that and parties. That's why a lot of things now you see that they got in community events, they'll bring out a clown or they have clowns come to these parties for these kids. But I'm telling you, you better stop bringing these clowns in. A lot of these clowns are tapping into all type of witchcraft to try to mesmerize these kids with different type of magic and things like that to draw them to really tune in to this uh, penny wise, and that's what I don't know how these kids are tapping into this stuff other than what I said before and, and listening to other kids and watching other kids get on these songs and tap into it. But you got to know, according to Slasher Sam, that this person was really actually not the person who inspired uh, this, you know, this name of call or this particular clown that was really demonic. They said it was actually Ronald McDonald. That inspired. Now, I'm not shocked by that, Ronald McDonald. That's why I guess why a lot of kids want to go to a McDonald restaurant. But we got to know that Stephen King is the one, along with Ronald McDonald, that was supposed to be the true inspiration of this particular clown, okay? But we got to make sure that we look at these issues even with Bozo the Clown. They say that it comes from Howdy Doody, that little cartoon and all that stuff. But we need to make sure that we're paying attention as parents. Number four, they said it has two weaknesses. This is a very, very key part right here. It says that Pennywise has two weaknesses, and those who can see him need to know what it is to overcome this terrifying entity. Number one, I told you it was a blood disguising, okay? And it says that these two fears of it means that it is of uh, this courage uh, and heart, okay, of uh, it. Courage and heart, in the, in the heart and the courage. Uh, and it says that in these films, the characters survive uh, are those who have shown both of these traits. What they do, they try to see if you have a courageous heart or if you're afraid, and they see which one they got to either make you strong or make you weakened to their benefit, that evil benefit. Pennywise, they said, is older than the universe. Matter of fact, they say it was a hard concept but Pennywise is older than the universe, which means this thing has been around for a long time. They also said that in the books, 
it is explained that Pennywise existed before the Big Bang, okay, and that he went into a state of uh, hibernation when he landed on Earth. All this stuff is so gory, so, uh, how they say, in the times that we didn't even think about nothing like this crazy myth that let you know that it's so demonic that ultimate goal is to start, destroy the generation that's coming up so they continue to kill and want to get guns and want to shed blood. we got to pay close attention. For such a time as this, we've got parents who are trying to go and get these clown outfits, these Pennywise clown for women and uh, boys and girls, and even adults are getting these Pennywise or uh, outfits to wear and don't know the demonic connotations that go with them. They said in number six that he has these superpowers. And I think that's one of the other reasons why these kids get connected because it appears that because this clown do all these things that's fun and look in and all that and, and can do all this magical stuff, uh, they say that these uh, powers, the main superpower is that he is a shape shifter. I said it early on that he manifests in forms of something that uh, they say his victim fears. And another is his ability to read minds. That's the part that I wanted to say when, he, when they put these uh, game uh, glasses on or these 3D glasses that parents are getting them that, that they think is just something fun that the kids are watching. But it's this super magnet, magnetization of the mind to make sure the child's mind is shaped and to manipulate it so that they can have this fear, they can have this imagination, so it can lure them toward this spirit that they're seeing with this clown. See, Pennywise also, they say, can create fake smells, you know, create these images to make it like they're friendly, and they sound like uh, and confuse the person who's looking at it, and many of the adults are being confused and are losing their mind, too, with all these different things. They say it can make plants die even when they touch them. See, they show these kind of kids these things and make them think that they can have these same kind of powers. That's why a lot of these kids that are in high school today are getting tuned in to this Pennywise. And one of the most powerful superpowers, they say, is the ability to change the weather. They think that they actually can have all these different uh, ways that they can speak to storms and stuff like that, which means that they look at and they pervert what we as, a, you know, as men and women of God can do, they want to take an occasion to try to think that they can create a storm or they can uh, make a storm stop. And actually, they just taking and perverting through this clown trick kind of uh, way of thinking or way of uh, uh, magic that they are actually doing that because they believe it. That's why they bring the gun and believe that they can shed blood and it, they, they get these rewards from this penny clown, you know, this penny wise clown. Number seven is they say that his arch enemy is a turtle. Now, that's real, real strange that his arch enemy is a turtle. You know, you wonder why it's a turtle. Say a turtle is another character for another one of uh, Stephen King's uh, books that he talked about, this, uh, he being this arch enemy of this clown. So the character from this ancient uh, movie or whatever you want to call it says that uh, this, horrible, this horrible kind of feature, I guess, that this clown has is like something that causes the, that uh, this causes this clown to have this other battle against this thing that maybe this creature or whatever is trying to consume them so they have this other power, this other strength. I really don't know how that part of it go, but I know that they, they really don't have any relation or want no relation with no turtle. And I don't know what that is. Maybe because they move slow. I don't know. But the eighth thing they say, it also appears in Tommy Knockers. Now, I don't know what Tommy Knockers is, but they say Tommy Knockers, they said Pennywise appeared in that book called Tommy Knockers. I don't know what it is, but in this book, they said one of the characters is traveling through Derry, Maine, and when he sees Pennywise in this, in, in this storm drain, who you can see how wicked this is. Although it is, it is possible that this particular hallucination, they say, that the sighting of Pennywise would mean that the Losers Club from it did not kill Pennywise, as the book suggests in this um, in this particular book uh, that's called Tommy Knockers. But they say Pennywise is also mentioned in four other books. Want to make sure that your kids don't get, and one of them is called Dream Catcher, and that's a book about a character that sees graffiti and says that Pennywise lives. You know, and we got to pay close attention because that's why we got a lot of the kids all marking up and doing graffiti and all this kind of stuff. And they said the other books, they said, what Pennywise 
is named, is called, no, the other book is called Insomnia and the Gray Matter. Be very, very careful about these types of books that we let our kids get, our, get their hands on or even just checking out of the library or asking you to take them to get these books or someone buy them the book because they mentioned it to them. Don't let that stuff live, live in your house. Don't let those kids even get a chance to even pick it up. Just the very thought of it should taint your very, you know, hands from wanting to be tainting your child's hands. You know, so that means you want to make sure that it's an unclean thing in your house and you will not allow it there. And then Pennywise, they say it's not dead. Okay, this is why so many of them are doing what they want to do in this last day because somebody's saying that they see Pennywise, okay, that he's actually not dead because of stuff that they're reading and these things that they're seeing. People watch these things on these movies, and they really try to relive them or let them live in their life. That's what these children are just doing. See, these children see these things on TV, and they see all these things, and so they believe that the intentions of it for them to see what's going to happen in the future for them with these, with these uh, I guess you want to call it cartoon demons, as far as I'm concerned, and they say that the three actors have played Pennywise, that there are three of them. Pennywise, they say, has been portrayed by these three actors. One of the actors was Tim Curry, they say, in the 1990 television adaption of the book. And then that role uh, then was taken on by, I think, Lily Putt for the 1998 television adaption. And then finally they say Bill Saskard had mostly played the role of Pennywise in the 2017 film adaption. So you can see that this spirit is still trying to run rapid. we got to make sure that we don't go to the movie, we don't entertain nothing about it, and most definitely watch these kids with these videos. And then they said uh, that this um, Pennywise reappears at intervals of between 25 and 30 years. Now, this is the thing that we got to be very, very careful about uh, this spirit manifesting Testing based on the minds of our kids in their room alone, trying to think on, trying to believe that the manifestation can come because they say that they're not, that it, this spirit is not dead, you know, that it's making these comebacks between these years and that they really believe that. And one of the things that we got to know that it uses the young mind because they know it can shape it to believe it. And parents and homes that are weak, homes that are unclean or uh, not saved or carnal, then these things can actually manifest because the child believes and that the gateways are open up from the sin, uh, the devil going to have a picnic in that house uh, and really, really send these kids into a whole lot of demonic uh, manifestations of their mind to think and behave certain ways. You don't know what's wrong with them because they're watching these demonic clowns and behaviors and movies. It's just not good. And then it says that... Uh, and that this uh, Pennywise has many names. Now, that's why we cannot track all these demons. That's why we got to constantly have, you know, conversations like I'm doing now and people passing on these types of recordings and doing their own research. If you're a parent, if you're a leader, you should be uh, preparing in your children's church leadership, training them to be able to identify when other kids may be having some free time. Even in the church, they're pulling up these uh, types of games. And, and, and these things are demonic to the minds of those kids that are connecting to them. These may be innocent kids who come from blood-bought homes and God-fearing children. But when they connect to other kids who have these demonic behaviors about this Pennywise dance and clown, many times they'll look upon these things and they get intrigued by it, and nobody knows their real name, okay, because they keep changing the name. These things say that these characters, many times, they have from one book to the next, they give different names. And many of these names, they have characters throughout these storylines that are all demonic, but they change just like the spirit upon this clown. It's forever changing. It's, a, it's forever trying to become something different so you can't call yourself trying to bind or loose it or kill it. But the main thing you got to know is that we can take, authority over every principality and every power that tries to come against our seed and in our houses and our churches. But we don't want to take the time to realize that these spirits have these gateways that try to come in, and we get too laxed on the fact that we're so anointed that we don't try to fight. I'm telling you right now, it also says that Pennywise can speak Swedish. That's one of the things that the enemy has been doing, using different language. She's Swedish when they speak Swedish. 
what it does, it takes advantage to make sure it speak a language that it seems like something fun. So these kids try to pronounce it and do whatever this spirit is speaking or mocking so the kids can make it be a song or whatever. And so you know it, they're chanting stuff to bring them into deeper bondage. And then number 14, it said that Pennywise can eat anything. That's real serious. Kids begin so scared that they think they're going to get ate up by this spirit that they actually do whatever it says because they actually believe that they can eat anything. It'll eat them, which means that he can consume anything he wants, and he can continue eating plants. He can pick clean, unclean things. He can pick whole individuals, and, and many times he wants to feast on the children. That's his ultimate goal. He wants to eat them alive first in their mind and then their body. That's why it's supposed to be a horror and scary. That's why the kids are afraid and obey this demon. Number 15, it says that Pennywise is possibly a female. Now, that's scary. The Pennywise might be a female, which means that many of the kids today are running from something that are so closely knitted to the one who's mostly scary. That is a female. We will holler and be scared more quicker than boys. But now, because of the power that this enemy is using, it, it appears as though it's some type of large person. And then, it'll, before you know it, it appears a large spider-like creature, okay, that was in this particular, or at the end of the story that they was telling about Pennywise. It just take on all these many forms. And the theory about the fact that it may be female and that this, this female in this uh, spirit that tries to show itself in Pennywise that might be female, it is not only just a female, but it also shows that it's pregnant, okay? So whether it's a spider, whether it's a male, or whatever, because it shifts its forms all the time, it may appear as a male, and then it may appear as a female. It may appear that this uh funny-looking clown now is pregnant. So that means now more spirits are coming. But the other thing is that it takes on all these different roles. It's very serious as it takes on these roles because what it wants to do is to inspire that child or that weak-minded person to fear this thing, to fear or be confused, and, uh, and that if they refuse it, that they may get into a real, real deep altercation as far as warfare is concerned, because the ultimate goal is to get you to take it serious, and that you do not try to play around with it because you're going to get hurt. But there are limitations to it, okay, is what it's saying. There are limitations. Pennywise has some limitations. Part of it, they say the Pennywise must obey the physical laws, okay, of whichever form it takes. So that means that if this spirit uh, is limited in different ways, depending on how it appears to the person, it most likely will be more powerful uh, in that particular character that it demonstrates or show itself in order to defeat certain emotions or to bring closer relationship and courage to be uh, get the person to come closer to them so they can really, really draw them in and emotionally destroy them or tear them apart or make them tear themselves apart or kill themselves because they believe this thing is really alive. We've got to pray for our children today. We've got to pray for our leadership and parents to understand. The other thing that it says, depending wise, is it, it, has, uh, it causes um, uh, cholerophia, whatever that is. It's cholerophia. I think I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it's C-O-U-L-R-O-P-O-P-H-O. B I A cholerophobia, rophobia, yeah, cholerophobia, cholerophobia. <laughs> anyway, that means it is fear of clowns, okay? And as many times people will have this and say the many reasons why people can develop this fear is because they've created Pennywise as being the character that caused their initial fear to begin. So we got to be very careful when we are introducing clowns to children. Don't let people give your child or your baby no toy or no stuffed clown because many of these clowns are causing these spirits to come upon these kids and they say based on the book it okay there was a sudden spike in the number of reporters suffers from this because of what this spirit does that rests upon this clown and they say when asked which is the scariest clown they said most people who suffer from this uh, color colorophobia phobia they said it was pennywise so we got to make sure that even though you don't realize these kids they understand who pennywise is because i just learned who pennywise is we got to make sure we understand number 19 is that pennywise uh, uh, uh their appearances cause problems 
for actors who portrayed him. Many times, if you look back on some of those movies, you'll begin to see that. As I began to gaze on some of the movies and some of the things that this clown was doing and, and the actions and the looks, the gory looks, I mean, I could feel such a demonic force coming from the pictures, coming from uh, the film that I was looking at, just trying to get a better view. And Daddy God told me to cut that out, shut that down, because this spirit is so bold and so strong, it tries to penetrate the very light that we have, and we got to make sure that we, we don't be in needless warfare concerning this spirit. But Pennywise has found the idea of sitting for hours, they say, uh, having his makeup done and, and taking it on and off. And many people are doing that just to be uh, in a clown mode. we got to be very, very careful with that. They said, however, once he got into that role, they said he truly began to uh, put you know, an effort into the whole part. But most of these people, they said that, that these people that was known to be, you know, actors as Pennywise, they said they began to get involved in having a whole bunch of makeup and brightly colored hair. If you begin to see these things and these kids uh, begin to start to act like that, putting all this color on their hair and doing these things, these things mean a lot. When you find themselves cutting themselves and doing some things, that's because these spirits have engaged in their minds and have seared their minds to believe that this is going to make them have the attention they need. It's going to make them have a relationship better for people to like them more because they have all this bright color all over their head and dye their hair orange and all these things, you know, and even their eyebrows and eyelashes. you got to make sure you pay close attention to the clothes that your children are wearing pay close attention to the things that are going on and how they want to wear these fake teeth and all these scary-looking teeth, maybe one tooth and one black and all that, and want to paint their, you know, their nails black all the time, you know, and toes black. you got to pay attention how they want to start doing their room black, too. The main problem is that they made this evil thing worse and worse as it got, you know, in our families from watching and we allowing these kids to get involved in these type of movies and without us trying to gauge what they're going to the movie to see and who's taking them. So Pennywise, they say, took over a whole new form in 29, no, 2017. They said that because this particular clown had become this type of shapeshifter, Pennywise began to pin, appear in all these books and all these different uh, movies and stuff like that to the point that people do not realize that some of these figures and things that these kids are seeing, they don't have heads, or either they have a head and don't have a body. You know, they start seeing these shadows. They start seeing these women in paintings that look like what they saw, or men in these paintings. They start seeing people who was all infected and marred up and cut up and with things, knives through their body and stuff like that. we got to know this is not of God. These are not things that just supposed to be something simple and, and, and fun and scary. You know, we as adults, I know when I was growing up, I liked it, looking at all that scary stuff. But now we're in the aisle right now. we got to make sure that we keep our eye gate pure so that it can really, really get us to see what is going on in the spiritual realm concerning our children, concerning our house. What in the world are we doing? What in the world are you doing to help your grandchild, to help your you know, your, your teenagers, to be able to watch even those adults that's coming in your house, wanting to watch these kind of movies and want to entertain people, you know, who want to do these type of clown activities and things like that. I'm just done here. I just wanted to bring this message out, especially because it's Halloween coming up. I don't want to call it hollow. I want to call it Halloween because Halloween is coming up, and we've got to fight with every fiber of our being that we got to make sure that we watch, fast, pray, and discern the hell that's trying to come in our house and to take again, I mean, come against those deceptive spirits that they're coming through toys and coming through movies and coming through games, these hand games, these different 3D eyeglasses and things like that and games that they play on the TV. We got to watch fast and pray and take authority over them and don't care how much they cry that they want that game back and don't care how much they cry that, that it's just a game. No, you got to take authority before they take over their minds and then there you go trying to cast the demon out and the doctor can't find what's wrong with them because they got demons inside their minds and have taken over their bodies. I got to go. I pray this has helped you. Please help somebody else. 
by delivering this message. Help some family, help some mother, help some grandmother who's taking over some 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 daughter, some child. Uh, child, they don't know what to do. Let them hear this message so they can begin to see. You can't just keep giving these kids these toys no more and going on about your business. You better watch fast and pray and fight. I love you in the Lord.